guys, welcome back to another episode of The Watch Addict. Today we're going to be talking about Blancpain. And this is a crazy historical brand, and most of you know this watch, or you should know this watch if you're into diving watches, or watches in general. Now the Blancpain 50 Fathoms goes back a long way. And I'm going to explain today the start of this watch and why it was created. And um, it's also its relation to the Rolex Submariner. I'm going to get the Rolex Submariner section more towards the end of the video. I'm going to start it off with explaining the actual history of this iconic diving watch, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. And let's get into it. Okay, so over 50 years ago, this watch was created for what they call the superheroes of the seas, the frogmen. These are tough guys who perform special missions in deep waters. But in order to uh, achieve these special operations, they needed help from several tools, or tool watches. And uh, Blancpain developed the 50 Fathoms, especially for these combat swimmers, and of course now it is an all-time classic with a considerable appeal to it. Now diving to great depths, moving silently through the cold and salty waters, and swimming furtively on coasts or to foreign vessels, uh, these are the missions that these combat swimmers actually do. Many of them are from special forces around the world. Uh, they basically protect ships and marine equipment, as well as rescue and recovery operations. Uh, they were called frogmen or sea fighters, like I mentioned. Now, the first Blanc Palm 50 Fathoms, which is pictured right above you, is the 1953 iteration. And this is the one that the French Frogman unit, uh, the French Frogman unit actually used. And it's, uh, it's a pretty iconic and classical watch there. Okay, now I'm going to get a little more specific. Okay, so we talked about who wants to use this watch. Now, the French Frogman unit is one of the oldest and most famous in the world. This unit was created by the Ministry of Defense in 1952 by Captain Robert Bob, and sorry if I butcher his last name, Malubier, Malubier, and Lieutenant Claude uh, Riffaud. And these men who are particularly skillful, persistent, assertive, and trained, and their equipment is definitely pretty high-end. Uh, these divers, they needed a hard-wearing uh, watch, a durable, robust timepiece that would not fail them in the deepest of waters. So what they did is they got in contact with Blancpain, and the two Frenchmen had the right uh, answer with uh, Jean-Jacques uh, Fletcher, and he was the CEO of Blancpain from 1950 to 1980, uh, Jean-Jacques. He was also a, a professional diver, and he accepted the challenge. And um, Blancpain was a small watch factory back then, but they uh, decided to go ahead and develop this watch. They wanted a watch with a black dial, pretty large, bold numerals, clear markings, as well as an outer rotating bezel. And they wanted to be able to align the bezel with the large minute hand in order to easily know the remaining oxygen left in the tanks. And that's still what it's used for today, in a way. Uh, minus all the computer stuff that's used today, obviously. And actually, the CEO of Blancpain back then actually dove with the watch. And there is a picture of him I will throw up diving with the actual Blancpain 50 Fathoms. So anyway, Blancpain fulfilled all of these needs and provided the first model of a dive watch in 1953. The Blancpain 50 Fathoms. And at that time, it was a huge watch. That was an era of very small and dressy watches, and the round case of the first edition actually measured 42 millimeters, and it had pretty long and massive lugs. It had a waterproof depth up to 50 fathoms, that's why we get the name 50 fathoms. Now, uh, after that, pretty much it became a great selling watch. Um, the 50 Fathoms was a, it proved to be a reliable, robust watch, and then also several other naval forces actually equipped their divers with the Blancpain model, including the Israelis, Spanish, German, and American Special Forces. And even Jacques and director Louis Mal used the Blancpain 50 Fathoms during the shooting of Le Monde du Silence, The World of Silence, and that was a 1957 uh, award-winning underwater movie. 
And also, civilian divers also use the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms as part of their, uh, part of their equipment. It was considered more of a tool watch uh, than a proper timepiece in a time of the classic small dress watch. And um, that's pretty much how it all got started. All right. Now, over the years, the design of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, uh, it was changed several times in different case shapes, as pictured above is the vintage Blanc Pond Aqualung edition. And they pretty much produced some new models up until the mid 1970s. And that was also when the uh, German Kampfschwimmers came out, which is pictured right above you. And kind of, then the quartz crisis hit, and Blanc Pond halted production of watches. Only up until uh, two, uh, 1999, uh, a new edition of the 50 Fathoms was released with a metallic bezel, and um, yeah, nothing really changed from then until the most modern iteration, the, the uh, 2007 Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, which is which is pictured right now. Now, the movement inside the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, uh, the modern one, is the 1315 in-house caliber, uh, produced in-house by uh, Blanc Pond, and it's definitely a robust movement. It's definitely a pretty refined movement, has a very nice finish. It also has a bi-directional rotor that provides energy to three different barrels and gives the watch a five-day power reserve, which is pretty amazing uh, for a dive watch. It also has a free-sprung balance wheel, which is less sensitive to vibrations and shocks. And the 1315 comes with large rubies inserted directly in the bridges and plates and a pretty classical finishing with beveled angles on the bridges uh, perlage of the uh, plates and circular stripes. And the caliber 1315 also is surrounded with anti-magnetic protection. Okay, now let's get into the topic of the Rolex of Mariner and the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. A lot of people think Rolex copied or homaged the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. Now, the original Submariner was released in 1953, towards the end, or 1954. The Blanc Pond was released in 1953. Now, if you put this into reality, if Rolex spent any time at all designing, testing, and manufacturing the Submariner, it's hard to say that they actually copied Blanc Pond. Because, I mean, maybe Blanc Pond beat them to market, but I do not think that Rolex in any way copied the 50 Fathoms. Now, some people say they took the idea of the rotating diving bezel, and that seems to be true from a lot of uh, forums and stuff that I've read. But in reality, there's no really other way on a watch to measure the time of a dive, especially back then when all these technological advances weren't uh, available other than using a rotating bezel to uh, measure the dive time and the oxygen that's left in your tank. So you can't really steer away from that, uh, that option added to the watch. So in my opinion, did, did uh, Rolex copy Blanc Pond? Not really. Uh, they might have took the rotating bezel from Blanc Pond, but they didn't really homage the watch. In my opinion, if you look at the two watches, they have two completely different looks, styles, and I think they're two separate, uh, you know, two separate works of art there. And that's pretty much all I have to say, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Uh, please leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, give the video a thumbs up if you like this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.